Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic chromosomes. This has come up in many other places as well, too, but we're going to look at it just so we have a clear comparison of the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic chromosomes. And we'll try to link this video to a couple other places in the syllabus, starting at the beginning um, in the cells unit when you learn about the differences between eukaryotic cells and prokaryotic cells. So let's find out a little bit what's going on in here. So when you look at their chromosomes specifically, for the prokaryotic cell, aka bacterial cell, you'll notice that there is one main uh, double-stranded piece of DNA, and it's actually circular. This is the place where the main genes are that the prokaryotic cell, the bacterial cell, is going to use to carry out all its instructions. Um, this may not seem so significant to you right now, but we consider it to be naked. That's easy to remember. It means there's no associated proteins. In the eukaryotic cell we're going to find in the chromosomes, they actually have little histone proteins. And there's been a lot of discussion about histone proteins in topic 7 when you're actually looking at nucleosomes as well too. Besides this regular circular DNA molecule, they also have some plasmids. And I'm not going to go into too much detail, but there's a lot of stories about what go on with plasmids. They're extra loops of DNA and uh, they can kind of divide independently as well too. There's no guarantee that when the bacterial cell divides that all the plasmids will be split evenly as well too or that they'll even be copied. A lot of the resistance that comes uh, in bacterial cells when it comes to being resistant to antibiotics actually comes from genes that are inside the plasmids. And as a result of this, scientists have been using since the 1970s plasmids as a way to deliver genes into bacteria to make bacteria be able to mm, follow instructions that we want them to have. So for example, production of human insulin, I can put a human insulin gene into a plasmid right here, and this bacterial cell will actually start producing human insulin, which we can then extract. So lots of applications for biotechnology as well too. So plasmids are present here in eukaryotic cells. Uh, there's not plasmids don't exist in there. And it's just one chromosome only. So let's look at eukaryotic cells. So whereas in prokaryotic cells, the DNA is a circular molecule in eukaryotic cells, we're talking about linear DNA molecules organized into many different chromosomes. For humans, we have 46 chromosomes. But for most eukaryotic cells, there are two or more different chromosomes. So direct comparisons go across really well. Uh, just a reminder, if you have to do some kind of essay or comparison or some kind of diagram, in order to get a full point, you have to do a complete comparison. So for example, you can't say uh, prokaryotic cells have circular DNA and eukaryotic cells have no plasmids. You need to clearly state the difference between the circular DNA versus the linear and then plasmids are present in prokaryotic cells and absent in eukaryotic cells. And then finally, I talked about uh, this naked versus being associated with histone proteins. Here's what a nucleosome looks like. So in eukaryotic cells, like my cells, the DNA is actually wrapped in a couple loops around a core, a histone core here that actually has a eight histone proteins. And there's another one that kind of snaps it all together. But for this particular video, you don't have to worry too much about what this is all about, but it plays a role in supercoiling and it's in other parts of the syllabus. And I've recorded some other videos about the structures of nucleosomes and how they can help with supercoiling and gene expression regulation as well too. So there you go, a quick look at the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic chromosomes. And hopefully you're reminded about a few other parts of the syllabus and how this can be linked all together. Always think big picture and how you can link one part of a syllabus to multiple other parts of the syllabus as well too. That's going to make you the most successful in preparing for your future and the exams.